Welcome to Pirate King. I'm Daniel, a software engineer at Microsoft, ex-software engineer at Amazon and eBay, and also a software engineering mentor at two educational startups. In this video, I'm going to talk about the reason why I decided to leave Amazon three months after joining it. So make sure to stay until the end if you're curious about it. And this time, I'm going to do it in a Q&A format. I hope you guys enjoy it. All right, so let's start with the first question. How long did I work at Amazon? I worked at Amazon for about 13 months. So I started working for Amazon in April of 2017. My last employment was on April 30th of 2018. So that's about 13 months. And like I said earlier, I decided to leave Amazon three months after I joined it. So yeah, um, several factors. Compensation wasn't really a major issue to me. But I think I kind of knew that I wouldn't be happy staying here. Combine that with the poor company benefits and the oppressive company culture, it really didn't take me long to make that decision. So that's the thing. Amazon doesn't really have that much perks or benefits. So I don't know about you guys, but for foreigners like me, the first thing that comes to my mind when people talk about these tech giants in the US is free food. So the company gives the employees like free food. And it's only after I started working for Amazon and moved to Seattle that I learned that there are two major companies in the US that still do not provide free food to their employees, Amazon and Microsoft. And I work for both, FML. And another thing that was critical in my decision was Amazon's green card sponsorship. So I think they changed the corporate policy to sponsor green cards for um, all software engineers now, but it wasn't incorporated during my employment. And being restrained to work and uh, living as a foreigner really sucks, you know? And I know this because I have lived my entire life as a foreigner in Canada, South Korea, Japan, and the US. And I already knew that other companies sponsor permanent resident cards, but why not Amazon? So you know, another compelling reason not to stay. Lastly, as I've mentioned in my previous videos, Amazon doesn't really have comparable benefits. They give you free Starbucks coffee, $100 to spend on Amazon.com per year, and also, free bananas yeah that's literally it nothing else it made its impact to the local community though it killed the local banana market because nobody was buying bananas from the grocery stores anymore I'll say that it's really competitive. I honestly can't say most of my coworkers were actually coworkers. Everyone kind of felt like they were my competitors. There's this thing called PIPs, P-I-P. It's short for a performance improvement plan in Amazon. And if you get that and you get pipped, then you can pretty much say that you are done because it basically means that the company wants you to leave. And unfortunately, even during my short tenure at Amazon, I had already witnessed quite a few number of people suddenly disappear here without a word. I had also seen a few managers get demoted too. <laughs> and this all happened within that 13 month while I worked at Amazon. So I can openly say that the job security is not great, obviously. Another compelling reason why I shouldn't stay in, you know, and get the hell out of here as soon as possible. You know, nobody wants to work under a fear, right? Um, one last thing that I'd like to mention is this really intriguing internal website that an Amazon employee had made. So what's very interesting about this platform is that this internal website gives you some kind of like a rank as an Amazonian currently working at Amazon. A rank in terms of how many Amazonians joined before and after you have and are still in this company. For example, when you have just started your day one in Amazon, obviously like you'll be at like rank 100,000 out of 100,000 Amazonians, I guess. So on my last day at Amazon, 13 months after I started working for it, I went back to this website to see like where I stand in terms of ranking. And to my surprise, I found myself in somewhere in the middle. I think it was a little above middle. So it had only been about a year since I joined Amazon and I was already at that 50th percentile in their chart. I said earlier that money and compensation are not the really most important thing to me. I guess I'm not alone in that sense. So yeah, I think I've already talked enough about Amazon's work culture. Just like the company name says, it really is a jungle where you have to survive. 
Again, don't get me wrong. Amazon is a great company. They're one of the fangs. They pay software engineers well. Their stocks have grown substantially over the past few years. And I've mentioned countless times that they give you free bananas. And despite all the things that Amazon is notorious for, I still think that it is a great company, a great business, and a great place to work. But how does that really matter if you're not actually happy working there? It's like how they say money cannot buy happiness. Likewise, great company and great business did not really correlate to my happiness either. And I guess if I'm not going to be happy, then I guess I shouldn't be there. So going back to the question, I honestly don't think that it's fair for me to say that I was unhappy at Amazon. I was simply unhappy at my team. The work wasn't fun. Not only that, I didn't think the team would help me grow into a better software engineer, which is another factor that I was really afraid of. So yeah, I think a mix of unsatisfying work plus a lack of growth with a little more emphasis on the former is what made me decide to leave Amazon so early. So the division was Amazon Prime. The team was called CMX, Content Management Experience. We were responsible for building platforms that marketers use to conduct experiments like A-B testing. And my team was responsible for building the front end of it. And here's the thing, I don't enjoy working on front end. Well, to be specific, it's not that I don't enjoy front end, but I don't like writing my own HTML and CSS. It wouldn't have been an issue if I was given the HTML and CSS and I only have like code on top of it. But the thing about this platform and my team is that it's not customer facing. It's an internal tool used by in-company marketers. So software engineers were really responsible for writing their own HTML and CSS, which really sucks. I mean, I don't want to deal with the visual design stuff, you know. Let me tell you an anecdote. There was an incident where I sent a code review and one of the code reviewers came to me with a, like a serious face saying, why is this color green? <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? Like, can't I ask the same question for red, orange, blue, or any other color? But obviously I didn't do that and instead just asked him back, what is your favorite color? Of course, man, I always do. And here's the thing, I always do it once because I don't believe there's a point in doing it twice. Here's what I learned from working at these uh, giant corporations. You have an issue and you bring it up to your manager, you surface it. If the manager is really the kind of person who really cares about you and sincerely wishes to turn the wheels around so that things do change for you, they'll make it happen without me having to say it twice. On the other hand, if they don't listen to you, show objections or say they will but do not take any actions, the chances are it's not going to change even if you say it multiple times aka it's time for you to leave. So I brought it up to my manager and explicitly told him that I want to work more on back end and not front end. I mean I'm a software engineer not a front end engineer right? Amazon is actually a little special in that sense that the roles are explicitly separated. Front end engineers as the name suggests only work on the front end and software engineers well work on a mix of both or just the back end. Anyways, I did tell him my true feelings and asked him whether a change would be possible. And I remember him saying yes, but with a very reluctant face. He actually said I'll try my best, but that best didn't really sound like the best to me. You know, if he did really try his best, then he would have at least like come to me and say something like, I did my best, but I wasn't able to find any backend work for you now. Would it be okay for you to wait a little until I find it? But instead, I heard nothing back from him ever since. I waited about a month, and as my third month at Amazon was finishing up, I told my wife, I'm changing my job. So, well, here's the thing, at Amazon, if you want to change teams, you still have to go through that full on-site coding interviews to make that happen. That means months of lead coding, lots of preparation. So if you think about it, if you're going to put that amount of effort and time into preparation anyway, why not give other companies a try? I can always fall back to switching teams within Amazon, but only if I fail to do so outside of it, right? Besides, it's not like Amazon has the best benefits and compensation anyways. So the RSU system at Amazon is quite messed up too. 
the restricted stock units only invest 5% on the first year, 15% on the second year, and 40% on the third and fourth. We call it a back-weighted investing system. Compare this with the normal RSUs and other companies where stocks invest 25% every year for four years, where you would have collected half the RSUs and other companies after two years, you wouldn't even have reaped a quarter at Amazon. And I explained earlier that money and compensation isn't really like, you know, like the most important factor to me. I mean, if those stocks are going to make me into a millionaire, then the story might have been different, but it's only 5%. And I don't think it was even worth like $10,000 at that time. And like I said, the price I'm paying by not growing at Amazon was greater than the money the stocks bring. I didn't think a few stocks is worth the career stagnation. So I made a decision three months after joining Amazon, but changing job needs preparation. And for software engineers, that means lead coding. But Amazon is my first company in the US and I had relocated all the way from South Korea for this job. So I spent the next three months to first, you know, get settled in Seattle first. Then another three months preparing for lead code. I started interviewing and decided to accept my offer from Microsoft nine months after I joined Amazon. I actually wanted to leave as soon as possible now that my um, next destination had been determined. But since I was on a work visa back then, there was this process of going through the visa queue, getting the work authorization, etc. Which delayed the entire process by additional three months. I honestly didn't really care about that 5% RSU, but because my visa approval took so long, I had no choice but to complete that full year at Amazon and I guess get that 5%. Nope, I absolutely don't. I have never regretted leaving Amazon, even after their stocks have quadrupled since I joined. Not only would they take four years to invest, I just didn't want to leave my career at stake. I mean, that's four years. Besides, Microsoft is a lot more chill and they offered me a position that I really wanted. There was nothing more that I could ask at that time. So this is my story. These are all the reasons why I decided to leave Amazon so early. So what do you guys think? Um, should I have still stayed at Amazon given that their stocks have like nearly quadrupled since I joined? with that compensation and stock, the money have been really worth it. And if you're wondering how I aced my Microsoft interview, you can check the full story out here. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it or at least found some values to it. What is the most important thing for you when you're choosing your company? Is it the money, the compensation, or growth, career, anything else? Well, whatever it is and wherever you are, I just wish that we all be happy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.